Lesson 11 in Module 5 is on the volume of cone. So we've talked about volumes of rectangular prisms, rectangular prisms and um, triangular prisms. I'm sorry, right prisms, rectangular prisms and triangular prisms. We've talked about volume of cylinders. Now we're going to talk about volume of cone. So hopefully we're familiar with what a cone is, ice cream cone, right? Um, it says the cylinder and cone below have the same radius and same height. So their distance, again, radius from the center to the outside in both of these is the same. And their height is the same. Okay? And that's a really bad drawing, but you get the idea. Same thing over here. Same radius and same height. So from here, oh, that was bad, sorry, to here, from here to here is the same. And then height. Now in this case, remember our height is the distance between, well, I'm going to say bases, but we got this problem with the cone, right? The distance from the base to the vertex, the tip. These are the same. So height doesn't have to be vertical. Using the examples above, what do you notice about the volume of a cone compared to the volume of a cylinder with the same radius and same height? So we're working on comparing these numbers. All right, so the volume of the cylinder here is 120. The volume of the cone is 40. What would what can we do to 40 to get 120? Multiply it by 3, right? Okay, does that work over here? The volume of this cylinder is 90 cubic inches, and the volume of this cone with the same radius and height is 30 cubic inches. Same thing, we could multiply it by 3. Now, Let's think of it the other way though. What do we do to 120 to get 140? What do we do to 90 to get 30? Well, we're dividing by three, right? Or we can think about it as multiplying by a third. So here's what we're gonna say. We're gonna say a cone has one third the volume with the same height and radius Ooh, try again try to spell the word and right of the cone okay so it's the same it has one third the volume so the formula is going to be the same but a cone we're going to take one third of the volume so let's see how that kind of plays out down here. The volume of the cone will always be one third the volume of the cylinder with the same height and radius. So the formula for the volume of the cone is, I know, anticipating here, right? Well, let me stop. Remember, I'm gonna leave a little space here. Our generic formula is capital B, area of the base times height, the distance between the bases, or for a cone, the distance between the base and the vertex, this point, we're just going to take one third of that. Now, because it's a cone, its base is always going to be a circle. That's what it says right here. Um, let me pause for a second. I'm going to give you another version. You can think of this as one third times the area of the base times the height. But remember, kind of like we set up here, we're either multiplying by three or we're dividing by three going the other way, right? So we could think of this as area of the base times the height divided by 3 because multiplying by a third is the same thing as dividing by 3. Since the base of a cone is a circle, always, that's what makes it a cone, the area of the base is found using pi times the radius squared. So our formula, Hello. and Jack says hi. All right. I, I got a surprise. Mama has homework. Yay! Chief for yep. Mama for her homework. I'm sure everyone is. Thank you, Jack. Go. Yeah, apparently you brought homework for me. I'm lucky. All right. Sorry. Back to this. Um, we can make this more specific. Okay. We can say the volume is one third the area of the base, which is pi r squared times the height, or using this formula here. We can say pi 
times a radius squared times a height divided by three. All right, so this is kind of where we want to focus right here. And it doesn't matter which one of these you use, whatever one you're more comfortable with, okay? All right, so then I'm going to say traditionally I've always used this one, but I'm kind of liking this one, not having to worry about, I guess I probably divide by three anyway. Okay, so let's use our formula here. The volume of, um, find the volume of each cone, use 3.14. Um, I will probably use a calculator again. Um, all right, so formula. Okay, so again, our formula that we're going to use here is either one of these. So I'll just use the first one for now. Volume, because it's a cone, equals one-third times pi times our radius squared times the height. Okay, now height does not have to be vertical. In this case, it's going to be the distance from our base to the vertex, the tip of the cone. Okay, so now we plug in values. Volume equals one-third times pi times our radius. Now remember guys, really important, radius is distance from the center to the outside times five squared times our height. Now our height is gonna be this distance here, okay? Notice it's not vertical, but it's still the distance from the circle to the point, so times 12, okay? So now we, um, we just plug it in, right? So I've got my calculator here. All right, so I'm, I wrote one third times, but I'm going to actually just divide by three. So I'm gonna say pi, okay, times five to the second power, which is five times five, which is 25, times our height, which our height is 12, and that equals three, um, 942. So that's this um, pi times five squared times 12. But remember, we have one third of that. So I'm just gonna divide by three. You know, I wrote times one third. Multiplying by a third is the same thing as dividing by three. And we get approximately equal to, that doesn't tell us what approximate, but 314. Because again, as soon as you multiply by five, pi, it's approximate. 314, I'll say 0.2. Okay, again, I'm not gonna stress about where you round to. And that is gonna be cubic inches, okay. So let's look at one more example. Okay, so again, formula we're gonna use, volume equals one third times pi times our radius squared times our height. Oops. So plug in our values, one third times pi times our radius. Now remember, our radius is the distance from the center to the outside, okay? So if the whole thing across is 22, our radius here is 11, it's half the diameter. So times 11 squared times our height. Now in this case it is vertical, but it's the distance, okay, from our circle to the tip, okay? And so times 10. All right, so using our calculator again, slide it over here. Um, I'm gonna do 11 squared first, okay? Times it by 10. Again, multiplying doesn't matter the order and then times it by pi, and then take one third of that. Now, you can absolutely go times, and then I'm just use parentheses, one divided by three, because that's what one third is, right? And we get 1,267.1 approximately, right? Now what I want you to take away from this is if you see that by writing the formula first and plugging in the values, it literally is just typing numbers into a calculator. That part hopefully isn't hard. Focus on putting, writing down the formula, putting the correct numbers in, then that will lead you to the answer, which you absolutely can use a calculator for.